Welcome to another tutorial from Burton's Media Group. This is our continuing series on Corona game development following the step-by-step -step guide published on the Corona website. This is part five where we will be examining the high score system. We'll be implementing high scores and being able to store them for later use and be able to do all kinds of cool comparisons. So let's get started. Um, as always, if you're interested in seeing the full written instructions, you can visit them on docs.coronalabs.com forward slash guide forward slash programming forward slash 06. So picking up where we left off at the end of our last tutorial, number four, where we were converting to the composer's scene management system, we're now ready to add our high score system. For this to work smoothly, we need to add the ability to shift to the high score screen or view or scene from the end of the game. Now you might remember at the end of our last video we added an in-game situation where Composer goes back to menu. Instead we need to make some changes so that it now goes to the high score system so that the player is able to see their success in the game. So let's add a composer.set variable and we're going to give it a variable name of final score and we will pass it the final score. Set variable is a part is a built-in system into Composer so that you can easily pass variables between scenes. So we have just created a variable called final score, assigned it the value score, the value of the player's high score. So this will take the information with it to the new scene. Now so that high score works properly if the player has played several versions of the game, we want to make sure that the previous high score scene has been removed from memory. And instead of going to the menu, we need to go to high scores now. Let's don't forget to add it to our menu so that we're able to go to the high scores straight from the menu. So there's menu, uh, we've got go to high scores, and it's already set up. Um, though there is a difference, we've got to be consistent. Here in games, we have capitalized the S, and in menu, it's a lowercase s. So let's correct that, and we'll correct that in the menu so that they are consistent between game and menu. Now we're ready to create the high score Lua file. So file, new, and let's go ahead and save that as high score. Now the player will be able to easily move into the high score scenes. Next thing we need to do is copy our information from our scene template. There's our scene template, and I'm going to select all of it using a Command A or Control A, and just simply copy it to high scores. And now we have all of the basics, the scene template loaded into high scores, and we can go ahead and get started in creating our system. First thing we need to do inside of our code is go ahead and initialize our variables that are going to be used throughout this particular scene. The first one of those is using JSON. We're going to be using the JSON system for storing the high scores locally. And let's go ahead and set up our score table. Again, this will be a standard table. And we need to set the location where the file will be stored locally. Mobile apps usually have three directories associ associated with them on mobile devices. That is the resource folder, which contains the main program, your assets, uh, any graphics. Um, these cannot change during the running of the application. So any file information that's going to be stored and permanent needs to be stored in a different directory. That would be the documents directory. So by using the system dot documents directory, we are asking the device to return where is the information going to be stored, where's the documents directory for this application. There's also a temporary folder um, if, or a temporary directory if you want to just simply store something during gameplay but it will not be necessarily available after the app is closed or after an upgrade has occurred to the application. Generally, we're, for anything that needs to be persistent, we're going to store it in the document directory. File path equaling system dot path for file tells the system to return where the system document directory is. 
So the next thing that we need to do is load the scores into the system. We can do that with a function, and that is going to simply read the information from any previous scores.json file into the application so that we're able to create the app. So let's get that loaded. So now we have our local function, load scores. It's going to create a variable called file that will open the information stored in our file path and that will open it for a read type situation. Then if the file does exist, it al it's already in existence, we're going to read all the contents of the file into the variable contents, then close the file so that it can later be worked with. Then we'll end, and we're also going to handle the situation that if the score table is equal to no nil, as in there's nothing recorded, or the length of our table is zero. In other words, it, the table does not exist or it doesn't have the table exists but nothing is stored in it, then we're going to create a scores table with zeros. And there we have our load scores and we're set to load that all into memory. Now let's go ahead and set up our function for saving the scores when we have a, a new high score to be added to the table. So save scores is going to go through and look at what's being stored in the scores table. It's going to figure out how many elements are currently stored in the scores table and count down from that number of elements to 11. So high number down to 11, stepping at a negative one. So if there's currently 20 scores, it will go 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, down to 11 and remove anything that is not in the top 10. Then once we have it limited to top 10, we'll open the file that we created before, scores.json, and open it as a write. Then we're going to encode our JSON data as the scores table and store it in temp and write that file, write that temp to our file and in the encoded JSON information. Finally, we will close the file. Now that we have those functions ready to go, we're ready to start displaying this information to the screen. First thing we need to do in our create scene, as you can see I've moved down to scene colon create, we need to load our scores and call that function. So that'll call the load scores function, loading it all into memory when the scene create is called. The next thing that we need to do is insert from the stored variable, if there is one, into the stores table so that we can process it and figure out what's the high, current high scores, if the player achieved a high score or not. So first of all, we need to retrieve that uh, set variable that we used in Composer that's retrieved with get variable. And we're going to insert that score into scores table. Okay, and that pulls in our variable with that was stored using the set variable associated with the variable name final score and we get that with the get and just automatically insert it into the table. Now we need to compare and make sure that we get our table sorted to make sure that we have our proper high score and this is done with a comparison function. We will be receiving two variables we're going to call them a and b and we will return a greater than b and this takes care of sorting our table assuming that I can spell return correctly. And then we call our table sort. And that will take care of sorting the table into highest to lowest. Now that we have sorted, we've loaded the scores, we've sorted the scores, now we're ready to save the scores. And we've got them saved and updated in the system. Now let's, now this has all been happening in the background. We haven't actually displayed anything to the screen yet. Now we're ready to start showing things to the screen. First thing we'll do is load our background using the background image. And that'll load the background and place it in the center of the screen. Now let's go ahead and load a header at the top of it so that the player knows that this is the high score screen. We'll do that with a display.newText. So we're using display.newText, storing it in the variable high scores header, loading it into the scene group for easy management, and placing it in the center of the screen, 100 pixels down from the top, 
using the native system font and setting it at a size of 44. So that should work really well. Now we need to go ahead and display our scores in the screen and we'll use a for loop to do that, just doing for i equals 1 to 10. To display our scores, we're going to just simply do a for loop and if there is a score located in the score table at that i location doing the first 10, we're going to first of all generate the y position. The y position is going to be 150 pixels down plus 56 times i. So that'll keep moving it down the screen for each score so that we have a good distribution of the scores and it's consistent in its spacing. Then we're going to create two variables, both of them text objects. The first one is going to just simply show the i number, so 1 through 10, starting with 1, and then a parenthesis with a space so that we can show the score. We'll locate that 50 pixels off center to the left at that y position and we'll set the size at 35. We'll make this slightly gray using the set fill color. So we'll set it at 0.8. That'll give it a little bit of a gray cast instead of straight white. And we'll set the anchor at 1. Now what that'll do is the anchor for the X is going to be on the right hand side of the 1 parenthesis space. So it will, be start loca it will locate it at that display content center X minus 50. That's going to be the far right hand side. This score is going to show the scores table value, so whatever has been generated with that information, and it's going to be displayed at 30 pixels off, except we're starting on the left-hand side of the app. And what that has the result is that we will get a high score system that looks like this. Currently, I've got eight values in there. As you can see, it distributes, distributes them very nicely. Okay, we just need to add a few more things to our high score system and we'll be moving right along. We do need to add a button so that the user can return to the menu. So let's do that. Place that in the center towards the bottom of the screen. System font and we'll make it a little bit bigger. 44 should do it. We'll set a fill color for the text. And we'll set an event listener that when the player taps it, it will go to the menu or go to menu function. So we need to go to menu function. So let's go back up here before create and just throw that function in real quick. And that's just going to do a com composer scene, go to scene call, going to the menu. Okay, now we have a functional high score system and we can click on the menu and go back and we can now play. So in the next chapter we're going to be working with some more really cool things. We're going to be adding sound effects and music to the game. And as always if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below. We have a lot more tutorials and lessons forthcoming. If you'd like to follow what's happening you can follow us on Twitter at Dr. Brian Burton or Facebook at Burton's Media Group, or follow us on our website, burtonsmediagroup.com. If you'd like notification through YouTube, hit the like or subscribe button. 